I have migrated the backend for our face detection system from Golang to Express just because I realized that I was using Golang for the sake of using it and the techniques that differentiates Golang from Express which is its concurrency techniques one of my uh, primary motivators of using it was not actually being utilized for this project so I didn't really see the need of using Golang the second reason being that my competency level in Golang is not in par of what I want it to be. Uh, so those two being the reason I migrated the backend from Golang to Express. Perhaps this might be a mistake that I'll realize moving forward. But for the time being, Express meets all the requirements that is laid down by this project. So let me just go over what we've done so far. For those of y'all who aren't well versed with Git, let me show you how to get the latest changes from our repo if you watched the last video. And for those of y'all who already know how to use it, you can just skip this section. I'll provide a timestamp below. So as you can see, we are in our VS code right here, our code base, this is our face detection system. And uh, if you're using ZSH, oh my zesh, uh, you will have this uh, color scheme as well. So if you don't, you can just install it. It's uh, quite straightforward. So this right here is our branch. So we are in our um, main branch right here. And what you have to do is you have to get the latest changes from our GitHub. So what you will have to type in is git pull. This will get all the latest changes from our uh, uh, GitHub. And as you can see, mine is already up to date with all the latest changes. But in your case, you'll probably have uh, new branches here, which is called F3 backend. So once that is done, what you have to do is you have to check out to that branch. So if you go to GitHub right here, uh, you can see there are uh, three branches. We have to go to our F3 backend, which is for this video. Um, so let's go back here and say F3 backend. So you can see we've, uh, we have F3 backend right here and that Golang was deleted and all the latest changes have come here. So once that's done, Step in clear, I'll clear everything out. Um, so the first instance of ZSH will have the back, will CD to backend. So B A C K E N D. We are in our backend. We can run our server. And okay, so we, uh, you probably get this error because you'll have to install um, the latest changes uh, from the package.json as well. So yeah, so. With this now you can run the server uh, or listening on port undefined okay so this is because if you go to our source index.ts you're using port from this constants folder which is taking in from an env file which we don't have so what we can do is uh, i'll also change this if this is not there we can use port 8080 but since we are using it, um, I'll create a .env file here. And you can see I've provided an env sample. So in this, we have uh, env samples are meant to see what are there in env. So we can just give it, uh, paste the same thing here, port 8080. We'll save that. And now you can see listening on port 8080. I'll just restart the server. So you can see, yeah, so we have our, um, we are listening to our port 8080. So the next step is to um, fire up our Flask server. So we have a virtual environment in here. So in order to start that, what you have to do is press in source, um, env bin activate. So this will uh, start the virtual environment for us. So as you can see, it's env here. That means we are, have started our virtual environment. Now to start the flask server you can type in python 3 flask server so this should be small letter so if you can see a flask server and under this flask server you have to go to flask server.py so you can just type in flask um, server.py and hit enter so this would start our flask server yeah so we've started our um, flask server as well. So let me show you what changes I've made. Uh, let me go to the code base and setting up this backend express took 
uh, some time um, just let me know in the comment section below whether there's any tools for setting it up but for in our case I've manually manually installed each and every package um, <clears throat> the dot env node one the ts config all that if you want to know how to do that let me know I'll um, probably record a video for that as well okay anyway uh, let's go to the main bread and butter of our project for this video anyway uh, so in here we have a plain express um, code and we have this login route in which we have a login controller but before that there's something else in here which is called Mutler so Mutler is something that allows express to use form data so express doesn't come out of the box to accept um, forms so we use Mutler to enable express to use basically um, form form data so the idea was to get the file data which is the image of the user to the backend and the backend would save it somewhere so in our case it saves us in this folder called uploads but I'm getting too ahead of myself so let me go to this controller which actually shows everything so we have this uh, Mutler middleware I've abstracted it so if you go here this just sets up everything so when you're using Mutler you need some configurations which is this and then you mention the storage so in our case we want to store this somewhere so we store it in a uploads folder in our root directory so this right here uploads and we um, give the file name uh, with whatever the file is being uploaded so this just saves it and if I go back here uh, we use that Mutler middleware so instead of having all this boilerplate in our main index.ts file we just abstract it out with the middleware right here uh, we have this upload um, constant and this just whenever you're uploading a form type yeah, this is how you do it in Express upload.single. So, as we are just sending a single file at the moment, it's single dot file, and this file is basically the key. So, if I go to Postman right here, um, key this uh, file. If it was named something else, you would name it something else in here. So, if it was like user, it would be user, and the key would also be user. But in our case, it's file. So, then we have the controller right here. So, again, I've we're sticking to best practices so I've abstracted that out as well so the login control is again very pretty simple we get the file from the request we check whether the file exists if not we say no file found and we hit a response post request to the flask endpoint again all this constants have been stored in a constants file so let me go back here and we for the data we just send in the file dot file name so what is happening here is uh, before what was happening is if I go back to Mozilla uh, to our main uh, if I go to the flash server what was happening is we were sending the form data from front end no we, uh, I haven't actually done that we were sending from uh, Golang to flash server the file uh, form data type flask the flash server you save it in a upload folder and you store again delete it as well so if we'll, let me just wait for this open so in here you can see uh, we receive the file type from our Golang backend. We used to create a upload folder. We used to save it. We used to access the file path, and we should uh, we used to all also um, delete that file path. So that was what we were doing before. But now in the latest um, code, what we are doing is uh, using Mutler. We save it in our uploads folder, and if I go to our Flask server flash server dot py right here uh, we we okay let me just show you that as well so for the payload uh, I send in the file dot file name um, and we receive that file name in here so right here as data parameter user picture name and image path we access the uploads folder we give in the user picture name so flash takes in whatever the image was saved I'll show you again uh, with postman how this works and we generate a unique ID we JSONify it we send it back to the backend right here so right here whatever the status is the unique ID which we get we send it uh, as a response so let me show this in postman how it works 
so uh, let me go back to the code you can see we have phase one phase two uh, but okay let me just delete one fine let me go back to postman and in postman you can see i'm hitting this endpoint localhost 8080 login and the keys file let me select a file uh, we'll say man face do i have it um i have to find it okay let me just face lady we have face man okay let's just use face lady so we have face lady open so face lady dot jpg we send it and we get an access error let me go back here you can see we've uploaded a face lady dot jpg and probably python cannot identify image file jpg okay so i believe the problem is because um this model cannot identify this face lady dot jpg so let's do another thing let me go back to postman instead of face lady let's try with mail face okay open and let me send another request here okay cool so we're getting t98r356 so probably the problem is with an image we probably will have to change the model which we're using here um open cv comes to my mind let me know whether there are any other ones um yeah so anyway so you can see here we have uploaded mail face uh, our matler has uploaded the face over here and flash server just accesses the path to that image and we get the unique id so that's how this the flow is currently for this uh, project um uh, so moving forward we'll probably dockerize the application instead of like writing uh, starting up the server individual we'll probably dockerize it we'll also incorporate the database so when instead of saving it in this uploads folder we'll probably save the unique id and the i think we'll also save the file image as well uh, we'll see we'll moving on you'll come to anywhere for me i'll have to figure that out so that's as far as i've worked up until this point if you have any suggestions uh, let me know down in the comment section um yeah if you want to criticize it go for it i would love to hear your criticism uh, make sure it's constructive of course um yeah so thanks for watching uh, see you all in the next video